Here's a cute parametric problem where we are looking for values of a when the system of these inequalities give us one solution, one and only one. So the way we're going to look at this problem first is we're going to look at the first inequality. This inequality contains only x and y and there is no a so this inequality just sets the restrictions on x and y. First, when we look at the first inequality, we see that there are two parentheses, two factors. And first we're going to deal with the first one, x squared minus xy plus y squared. We see squares here, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to complete the square over there. To do that, we need to remember this formula, that c minus d squared is c squared minus 2cd plus d squared. So now what we're going to do, we're going to say, well, c here is x here, and then we would like 2cd to be xy. And if we do that, we find that d should be y over 2. Now, to complete the square, we need to add d square, so we need to add y over 2 square. In order for us to have a valid equality here, if we adding y over 2 squared, we have to subtract it too. So, and now the first three terms gives us x minus y over 2 squared, and if we add the last two terms, we get 3y squared over 4. Now, notice that both of these terms are non-negative, and therefore whole thing is non-negative. Now, the only way to get 0 here is to have both this term and this term to be zero at the same time. If the second term is zero, it means that y is zero. Now let's plug this y equals to zero in the first parenthesis, and we're gonna get that x has to be equal to zero. So the only way for this guy to be zero is for x and y to be zero at the same time. Otherwise, this guy has to be positive. So, and for the cases when x and y are not zero at the same time, the first parenthesis is positive. And therefore, what we can do now is to divide by this parenthesis. Okay? If we divide both parts of this inequality by the same positive number, inequality will hold. And in this case, we're going to have an equality x squared minus 36 or greater or equal than 0. If we rearrange it, we get x squared greater or equal than 36, and that means that x either greater than 6 or less or equal than minus 6. So essentially, we've got three possibilities for the first inequality. It's either x and y equals to 0 all the time, or x greater or equal than 6, or x less or equal than minus 6. And in addition to that, our system of equation that has the second inequality, which we're going to deal with right now. The second inequality has two absolute values. And before we deal with absolute values, we need to remember the definition of absolute values absolute value of something we call z here is equal to z itself if z is greater or equal than zero or equals to minus z if z is less than zero so to handle the absolute values what we need to do we need to consider four cases first case will be when both whatever we have inside of the first absolute value and whatever we have inside of the second absolute value are non-negative. In this case, uh, absolute value sign just simply could be dropped, and we can replace the uh, quantities in absolute values with these formulas. Okay? And if we do this, this is what we're going to get. Now we see y and we see minus y. It means that y cancels out we get inequality like this, which can be simplified, and we get inequality for x, that x is less or equal than a over 2 plus 2. 
The second case we're going to consider is when what we have in the first absolute value is negative, but in the second absolute value is non-negative. In this case, we will open absolute values using these formulas. We plug those into this second inequality. This is what we're going to get. We simplify it. Now we got minus 2y less or equal than a. Now what are we going to do? We're going to divide both parts of this inequality by minus 2. Remember, when you divide both parts of inequality by positive number, inequality holds. When you divide both parts of inequality by negative number, inequality flips. So what are we going to get? y greater or equal than minus a over 2. In a similar way, in the third case, we assume that x minus 2 plus y is greater or equal than 0, but x minus 2 minus y is less or equal than 0. In this case, this absolute values are going to be open this way. We plug this into the second inequality in the system. This is what we're going to get. We simplify, divide by 2, and we've got ourselves y less or equal to a over 2. The last case to consider is when the things inside of these absolute values, in both cases, are negative. We're opening the absolute values in this way. Substitute into this inequality. We get an equality of this kind, simplify, simplify, and we get x greater or equal than minus a over 2 plus 2. The next thing, we're going to rearrange these inequalities, and we write them like this because it will be easier for us to handle later on. What do we have so far? We have restrictions on x and y which is written here, those coming out from first inequality we have in the system. So this inequality gives us four conditions. This is one, two, three, and four. And as long as we satisfy one of those conditions, we will satisfy this inequality. Okay? We don't have to satisfy them all at the same time. In fact, it's impossible but we need to satisfy one of those. So and now we need to figure out what are those conditions. And to understand what we have here, let's do some drawing. We introduce coordinate system. And first, what we're going to do, we're going to put the conditions for the first inequality here, or which is equivalent, these conditions. Okay? First, we're saying that one possibility to satisfy first inequality is to have x and y equals to zero. That's the point at the origin. Or to have x greater or equal than 6. It's to the right over here, right of x equals to 6 in the speech area. Or to be to the left of x equals to minus 6 for this speech area. And that's really the solutions for the first line, for the first inequality we have here. Now let's deal with the second inequality, okay? So we need to look at these four possibilities. First of all, since we're considering y greater or equal less than 2 minus x and y greater or equal or less than x minus 2, what we need to know is what happens when there's an equality sign. So we have y equals to 2 minus x, that's this green line, or y equals to x minus 2, and that is the red line. So now let's look at the first condition. y greater or equal than 2 minus x, it means that we are on or above this green line y less or equal than x minus 2. It means that we are on or below this red line. To be at the same time, on or above this green line, or 
on and below this red line, we have to be in this wedge below the red line, above the green line. And that will be for x is greater or equal than 2. But here we have a third condition that tells us that x cannot be more than some constant that depends on a. So essentially what it means that all these three conditions will be correspond to x's and y's that lay in this blue triangle. And the vertical line on the right here in this triangle has horizontal coordinate of a over 2 plus 2. Okay. Now let's consider this guy. y is less than 2 minus x. That means that we are talking about points below the green line. y less or equal than x minus 2 means we're talking about points on or below the red line. And that means we're talking about this area between this red line and this green line below y equals to 0. Okay? And then there is a third condition that y has to be greater or equal than minus a over 2. And altogether, they tell us that we need to be in this blue triangle. In a similar way, if you consider the third condition, we find ourselves right here in this triangle. And the last thing we see here is this condition. That means that we are right here and we're in this triangle. So really what it means that to satisfy this inequality, we have to be inside of this square. The square has a side equals to a. And as long as we are inside, we satisfy this inequality. Now to satisfy to the system, we need to satisfy this inequality, that is to be in this blue square. But also we need to satisfy what we have here. So we should have either this point, x and y equals to zero, or be in this right pitch area, or in this left pitch area, right? So in this particular case, for this particular a and for this particular square, we have solutions at the point zero, zero, and also everything that lays in this rectangle where the square and the right pitch area overlay. Now what we notice also that when a goes larger and larger, the square is getting larger and larger. And we're capturing more and more those pitch areas. Okay? But since we're looking for a single solution, we need to avoid the pitch areas because pitch areas give us infinite number of solutions. To get just one solution, we need a square that only covers 0, 0.00 and no pitch areas. And that means to have a square like this. So the only solution here that satisfy this system of inequalities and equalities is 0, 0, 0.00. And that's what we're looking for. Now, to get this, we need to have a relatively small. But we cannot have a very small, because when a is too small, we have something like this. And when we have something like this, there is no overlap between the top conditions and the bottom conditions. So essentially what we're saying, that the smallest square we can have is the square that has a left boundary that goes through point zero zero. In this case, we need to have left boundary either at x equals to zero or lower than that. And the condition for this is here, minus a over two plus two less or equal than zero. 
the largest square we can have is when the square gets close to the speech boundary on the right. In this case, the horizontal coordinate of the right boundary should be less than 6. And that's written here. Notice the first condition has less or equal, and the second condition has strictly less than. And that's because in the top condition, we do want to include the uh, point zero, 0, and we want to consider the case when zero, 0 is on the boundary. In the second case, we do not want to be on the boundary x equals to 6, because in this case, we're going to have infinite numbers of solutions, and we need only one. That's why there is a strict less than 6. And if we combine these two conditions together, we get the final answer that a should be greater or equal than 4 and less than 8. Final thought is about a equals to 0 or negative a's. So really when we look at the square, we said the size of the square should be equal to a, and from that we see everything works fine as long as a is positive. But what happens if a becomes 0 or negative? When a goes to 0, it's simply that all this square shrinks to 1 point to 0. Okay? And that we can see directly from this inequality, because what we have on the left-hand side are sum of two non-negative numbers. On the left, we would have 0. It means that sum of two non-negative numbers should be less or equal than zero. It's only possible when both of these absolute values equal to zero. And that actually will give you uh, the final solution as x equals to two and y should be equal to zero when we solve the system of these two equations. So what happens when a goes negative? It's, we can quickly see that in this case, we don't have any solutions because we would like to have something on the left, which is non-negative, to be less or equal to some negative number. That never happens. So really, we consider all the possible cases of A and all the possible cases when this system of equation works are here, from 4 till 8.